Now I believe uh, the hearse has uh, arrived at, at the Lee Funeral Home. Uh, this looks like uh, that's where it is now. Uh, finally, from the Karen Hospital to the Lee Funeral Home, uh, where um, you know preparations will be made for his final journey. We await uh, the formal announcement. Like we said, we're waiting on State House tonight. That formal announcement said to come from President Uhuru Kenyatta. And we're continuing to talk here about, um, you know, the, the Kenya that we are in today. Um, seems like the same problems that uh, Kenneth Matiba was talking about from 1990, 91, his detention, going <coughs> to the UK uh, to get specialized treatment. A number of those issues, you know, still emerging today. And that is what we're discussing with Edwin Sifuna, as well as some of those um, 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 solutions for the country for the way forward. Edwin Sifuna, stay with me for just a moment. The person I'm about to speak to next on phone is an important man in the history of this country, and he's a man who was detained on the very same day with Kenneth Matiba, and that is Gitobu Imanyara, and he joins me now on phone, um, and we can speak to him. Um, Gitobu, just your reaction to this, you share a very personal history with Kenneth Matiba. I would just like to hear your initial thoughts um, on his death. Yes, uh, Yvonne, that is true. And what makes me particularly sad is that I personally have just come out of the hospital about a week ago. And I was in the next um, ward bed. A room with Kenneth Matiba. He was not well, I can say that. Um, second point I want to make is that uh, I think we really do need to get away from this shedding of crocodile tears when our heroes die. We need to recognize them when they are alive. I've seen Matiba suffer. I've seen Matiba file cases in court in order to get compensation. I have witnessed him die before he's even paid that compensation. And yet we will have politicians, we'll have government officials saying all the good things that they should have said when he was alive. I am angry, very angry that, as I speak to you. And my heart goes out to Edith Bativa, um, whom I've just been with at Karen Hospital after Ikonyo. Dr. Ikonyo called me, I drove there, and I've been sitting with her and the family, and I just cannot help but shed tears when I see the suffering this lady has gone through. All these years, Matiba has fought. Don't forget, Matiba's businesses were bankrupted because he financed the second liberation from his own personal uh, resources. And what have we done? We watched him die. We watched him suffer. Um, and now we hear all sorts of people uh, shouting and screaming what a hero, who he was. We could have saved Matiba. We could have saved his businesses. We could have named the street for him when he was alive so that he can feel appreciated. I, I, would, I would hate for all these kind of things to be said after for me when I'm gone because it's, it's, it makes me very, very, very angry. I've just been to a hospital bed uh, that was occupied by Matiba less than three hours ago. He's no longer uh, a human being. His body is probably now at least funeral home. And now we shall have all these <laughs> noises and statements from politicians, from people claiming to have known him, giving his history, from a media that ignored him. It just reminds me of what... Uh, I heard yesterday from Winnie Mandela's daughter uh, when she was reminding us, even we of the media, how we fail because we are forever pleasing the politicians and forgetting the people who have gotten where we are. I particularly feel sad today that Matiba has gone unappreciated in this compensation. But within minutes, we are going to hear all sorts of noises from people who claim to have known him, to have worked with him, but who are lying. I think we need to come out of that culture, uh, Yvonne. Indeed. Um, and uh, such an impassioned plea from you about him being forgotten. Uh, 
how should we remember him then? You um, have just told us about how you were in hospital with him. You've seen the pain and suffering he and his family have undergone. Um, how should we remember him, yourself, I think, Charles I think Rubia, need, and a we, number of others? We need, we need to remember that what Matiba fought for has not been achieved. What Matiba uh, has gone through has not brought up any um, uh, results that we can appreciate. That is why I think all Kenyans, wherever they are, should really um, think of what role we can play. Uh, Matiba is a perfect example of what we need to do. We need to complete the unfinished business. And when I say this, I, I'm not blaming any particular person, but uh, just to remind us, as Kenyans, that we do need to appreciate and remember that what Matiba has died fight is not, is not, I repeat, been achieved. And if we can do anything to achieve the democratic space to enable Kenyans to speak freely, to enable Kenyans to seek political office without being told that this position has been reserved for somebody for 10 years or 20 years, then we will have made a gesture towards Matiba, wherever he is, looking down on us. He will smile and say, yes, it was worth the fight. Would he be smiling down on us today, right now, with... Um the current um, situation that persists in the country? I think it's for us really to um, see what we can do. If he's not smiling down on us, what we can do to make him smile. He gives so much for this country. He did so much for this country. What, how do we go to sleep tonight? There are lots and lots of people, probably thousands, if not millions, watching uh, TV screens, probably listen to me now, and who will go and sleep, and tomorrow they'll forget. If all of us can remember that Matiba has died without achieving 10% of what he's fought for, then this country will have done as proud. Let us remember that. May he rest in peace. May he find peace, because I think he does deserve it.